You know, when you're down, sometimes you got to really pull yourself back up and believe. You know, I always say you got to believe 100% in what you do yeah. and the people. But you also have to believe that what you do is helping is important to someone. It's not, it can't be like I find for me anyway, it's not about money. It's not why am I doing this? It's not about money. It's I'm doing it for a broader good and to help someone. It's Monday and time for the Back to Business podcast. Featuring Calgary's industry leaders, insightful and inspiring conversations with founders, CEOs, entrepreneurs, and philanthropists who help shape our city. Heralding from the Calgary Petroleum Club, connecting Calgary's business leaders since 1948. In the spirit of reconciliation, we acknowledge that we live, work, and play on the traditional territories of the Blackfoot Confederacy, Sigsika, Gaina, Pekani, the Sutena, the Aahe Nakoda Nations, the Metis Nation Region 3, and all people who make their homes in the Treaty 7 region of Southern Alberta. Welcome today's show host, Kim Hayden. Today's guest is Bill Murphy. Bill is a CPA with over 30 years of experience in directly helping small and mid sized businesses innovate grow, and succeed. He is the founder of Gremlin Ventures, co-founder of Humans, an integrated core SMB financial services. He's the co-founder of WagePoint, Canada's leading online SMB payroll provider, and co-founder of the Founders of Ledgers, Canada's first bookkeeping franchise. A serial entrepreneur with a passion for helping small, medium businesses and ensuring the people he works with excels, Bill moved to Calgary with his wife Donna in 2014 to become the president of GBL and they quickly fell in love with YYC. All righty. Welcome to the show, Bill. How are you? Hey, going great. How are you? I am doing awesome. Thank you for asking. Okay, so... Um, I have a lot of questions around this. We've got 35 minutes to try and like plow through everything because I myself am in a startup position. Mm. I know lots of companies who are in startup commit positions and I know that the services you offer really are integral to the success of companies like mine. Um, but before we go into kind of pulling this apart and how what you're doing applies to today's world. I'd love for you to share a little bit of who is Bill. Mm. Sorry, I just had to take a sip of that cappuccino, which is excellent, by the way. Um, I'm a, um, from Nova Scotia originally, from Cape Breton, um, CPA. Um, you know, it's uh, I've always done sort of uh, or like creative stuff, and and I think, you know, helping people and helping – I mean, I've been in this sector, this small business sector for so long. It's like second nature to me. I had my own accounting practice after I left KPMG. And, and uh, you know, it's I love helping people. I love giving back. I love, you know, taking care of my family. I've got two rescue dogs that I love and, you know, take care of myself as well. And, um, you know, it's um, – I'm just, uh, just an ordinary guy. I just happen to be a CPA and – you know, and I enjoy it. I, I like that. I like being a chartered accountant, or I guess not chartered accountant anymore, certified or chartered professional accountant. Um, but anyway, yeah, it's just uh, I'm just an ordinary guy with uh, you know, with an entrepreneurial sort of bend to my personality. Okay, what kind of dogs? I have. They're both rescues from Mexico. Uh, they're both um, you know, Heinz fifty sevens, and you know, one of them only has three legs. Um, you literally have a three-legged dog. We have a three-legged dog. That's and awesome. Yeah, we. She's just amazing little dog, and had them for three years. My older one, and two years my younger one. So, yeah, it's great. I mean, having a rescue is just having a dog. You know, before I owned a dog, I never realized how much joy a dog brings to your life. But it's it's, you know, petting a dog, being just getting that unconditional love from a dog, and giving it back is just pretty amazing. I get it. Uh, yeah. We have, Do you have dogs? we have yes. Yeah. My my personal favorite was our first dog. We had it as a family. Sporky. She was a rescue. Uh, she was a Heinz fifty seven. 
dog could run like crazy. She'd like the Houdini of dogs. She'd escape everywhere. The dog catcher in Toronto would come up and say, is that your dog? And we'd say, I don't know. Can you catch it? <laughs> <laughs> so we had, and our kids will all tell you that like that's such a, a, a core piece <clears throat> of, of their childhood and their memories. Yeah, that's great. I love how you talked about the the rescue aspect, mm-hmm. right? And when and being a person, I am not a CPA. I am not in any way, shape, or form a linear thinker. Mm-hmm. I am a creative salesperson. Right. Have always been. Yeah. And when I think of finances, financial advice, uh, bookkeeping, any kind of back-end structure, just even invoicing my clients is a challenge. And so when you said the word rescue, it made me think right off Mm. the bat. It's like how many businesses, how do you go into small, medium businesses that have been started like myself and, and, and get those people to move forward? Because I am not... A unicorn. I am the very average small business yeah. person out yeah. there. So walk me through. So first, first of all, Gremlin, love it, <laughs> no. love it, great name. <clears throat> walk me through a little bit what Gremlin is doing yeah. because I know we said integrated core SMB uh, financial store services. Can you explain to me what integrated core is? Uh, yeah, in- integrated core means that you know. What are the core business processes in, in terms of, could be whatever, in, in terms of financial, but they integrate. They it, It's like your body. I of, often refer to people, and I'll think about all your systems, your processes, your business as a physical body and how everything has to work together and and is dependent and integrated with the other pieces. So, you know, integrated core financial services could be anything from bookkeeping to your you know, how do you move money? How do you pay bills? How do you pay payroll? How do you pay benefits and collect? And how do you collect your receivables and invoice your client? And But it's all integrated. And I think that, you know, in the past, we, we went through a period where there was, it was integrated mentally, but there were books and pieces of paper everywhere. So it wasn't integrated physically. Then you moved to sort of where data became electronic and things could integrate on that level. And then another phase of where all these apps launched and they plugged into it and they they integrate it, but it, it made it so confusing for people to, you know, how yeah. many apps do I need and which yeah. one's the best and how do they all talk? And so you end up with people with multiple systems, multiple apps, and are they really integrated? No, not really. And not to serve the human, and you know, which is I'm all about, is how do you serve the, the, the person that, the app or the data works for. And now we're into this, I think, exciting time where data where you can have real integration that's useful. And not just saying that it's integrated or that there's an app that you stuff on or, or connect to and it's integrated. But how does it integrate as a whole? I think that's we're in an exciting time. When we see the technology and the human intelligence mm-hmm. work collaboratively. Yeah then you start seeing some solutions happen. I think so. I think that's the missing piece. And it's like we've driven, you know, not just, I mean, economies and businesses and people and entrepreneurs have driven this, you know, where they're at. Technology. Technology will be the great savior as artificial intelligence is now the new messiah. It's like, but is that really what we want as a species or as, as people? And I think... I don't think so, and I think that's you know when Gremlin. So Gremlin just sort of sort of yeah. Back so up. walk me through Gremlin. I yeah. want to so, understand it a little yeah. bit better. So so Gremlin's like uh, Gremlin was a seed investor and in the, the largest investor in WagePoint, which became Canada's you know online uh, you know SMB payroll service provider and a great one. And I was one of the founders, and Gremlin was one of the founding partners and seed investors and. And we did great, and we exited, grew it, and uh, Richard Lands is a close partner. I've got some other partners in Gremlin, too, but he, him and I are from the very beginning. And uh, so we exited at a wage point, and then we turned our attention to the, some unfinished business in the SMB space for me and said, you know, what can we do now? And, and really it became about decision-making for small business. So Gremlin seeded that. We invested uh, money into, into what became humans. 
and um, and support it. And we support SMB. I mean, Gremlin Gremlin's next wave of adventure after humans will be to continue to invest in innovative SMB startups in the fintech space specifically, if we can. Um, but also providing services. So Gremlin's all about taking some knowledge that some of the key providers and the partners in Gremlin, like myself, have in, in providing that to SMB. It's not just about, you know, it's like you see, uh, you know, an investor in a business. Well, an investor, you know, can you be an investor and, and can you be, I hate the word advisor and mentor, I hate all that stuff, but can you be an active participant yeah. To help, to actually help. So Gremlin sees itself as that, as that. Like a sponsor. Moving, you know, sponsorships are are those leaders that they're not telling you how to do it, but they support you as you do it. Yeah. Does, that, does that make sense? It's no? It sort of does and doesn't. I think, you know, it's. <laughs> Be sure to watch the uh, the, the video, folks. Uh, Bill's sitting over here cringing, going, ah, I don't yeah, like the word. But it's, yeah, it's, 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 it's hard to. It's hard. It's like we throw around words like advisors and mentors and sponsors and this and that. Maybe there is no word for it. Yeah. Or no word that hasn't been or tainted no or overused. Oh, beautiful. Right? Yeah, exactly. You know? There's so much overused. Yeah, right? so many are so overused. Yeah. Like the word superhero. I saw that. I heard that like six times in presentations the other day that were being pitched to me. And I'm going, yeah. when we don't all have to have superpowers or be superhero. That's right. No. no, can we just be people? Exactly. Can we just help? And it's like for Gremlin, it's about can I help and how can I help? And part, part of the problem, you know, I always see with advisors and mentors is that they're not, they're involved on the surface. Yes. They're not deep. Yeah. yeah. They're not Don't. awake at night yeah. worrying. It's easy to give advice. Mm-hmm. It's easy to give advice when you have no skin in the game. And when I say skin in the game, it could be money, reputation. There's the various ways, but when you don't have that skin in the game, I can sit at armchair quarterbacks, critics, whatever. You know, it's how do I engage? And I think Gremlin is about that. It's how do we engage uh, in a way that's real with skin in the game to help make uh, one of our uh, investments successful. And that's what, we, what we've really done with humans is, you know, humans is our investment and we've put the money in when we've put our expertise in. And, uh, but we're now getting to the point where we'll provide that gremlin will uh, to others, to other SMBs out there in a way that we yeah. think is helpful. So we're in a really interesting time where we just touched on AI. It's going to save the world. It's mm-hmm. the next messiah. So forth and so on. We're seeing major corporations who are right-sizing and right-sizing many experts right out of jobs those experts then who have always been in a corporate structure are moving into uh, fractional positions within companies because they're finding that they can actually leverage their expertise they may have never touched a financial book before because that was never Mm -hmm. their space to do that from your perspective in your space, what are some things that you could advise or or things that they should look into before they even look at taking on their first client, before they even look at their first billable? And you're talking to somebody who I signed up for Infusionsoft or Confusionsoft in my space, and I couldn't bill anybody. I couldn't figure it out. I spent hundreds of dollars and never figured it out. So, and this is a phenomenon. There's a lot of people who can make a lot of money independently in small, medium businesses, but they don't know how to manage it. Yeah. What are your thoughts around that? I mean, you know, the old, the the book, The E-Myth by Stephen Covey, right? I mean, everybody should read that because it's, it's, it really is gospel for how so many entrepreneurs come into being like yourself like you have expertise you know i forget the examples he uses could be anyone could be a plumber it could be you know next thing i know i'm running it's a business it's not just a skill anymore because there's so much more to running a business and i think that's the missing element it gets really confusing because for uh you know you talk about different software that you can use and whatnot and you see ads for some of it now and more so than probably ever that i've seen and and it's like when I talked about integration and 
And and really, when you know, with humans, those humans became about that. It's about how do I bridge that gap for someone? How do I really help someone? Because if you, uh, you know, if I'm say uh, I want to start my own, I've been right sized, as you say, and I want to start, and it's like okay, forget about the billing. I can I can understand how what I want to offer and what you know I, what my you know my marketplace. Uh, positioning is and 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 the product or service that I want to provide and what that should look like, but then there's all the other components and it gets harder and harder as you get bigger and bigger and as you you know I had an employee well how do I pay them okay well how do I do that and how do I file my you know do I incorporate do I not it's like so when we built humans we built it around that whole um, we started with bookkeeping accounting payroll we built a data component and analytical component. That will have education overlays. How do I help someone? How do I make you put you in a position where you understand what you need to understand about your business? You don't need to be an expert in it, but it can help you make the right decisions. And when I found it, I really found, or I found it, the team. Well, I guess I found it at the start, but there's always people come in. Right? Own, own what you've done because, yeah, yeah it, there's a legacy to leave. Yeah, it's, it's um, you know, when I... I had, we had exited at a wage point and I was, I got an iPad and I was playing golf or something on it. And it was, I was, you know, I didn't have to work. I didn't, I was bored and that, you know, what, what's, what's really for a small business. Cause I love small businesses and, you know, I'm a small businessman myself and owner and I love them and I want them to, to be successful. And I thought, you know, where does anyone get truthful information anymore? It's like, it's just, everything is, you know, I search, I uh, say a benefits program. Well, maybe it's advertised. It's a bot list of the 10 best. Are they really the 10 best? You got to go down 50 pages of Google before you maybe find the actual what you're looking for. What I find research that. takes longer today than it did when I was going through <laughs> the Encyclopedia so Britannica. It was easier. <laughs> Easier. There was a single point of truth, <laughs> and it was the encyclopedia, right? Okay, <laughs> I still have my set. Just oh, so you wow. know, I do. I, yeah. I my parents, yeah. my parents never sprung for one. I wanted. I wanted oh that set, yeah, but, yeah, yeah. But you're right. I mean, it was, and, and sort of that. That's my point. It's where do you go? And it's even worse now with AI because I, what's real? Yeah. I don't know what's real. Yeah. I, any any pictures I see anymore, I go. Has it been doctored? Any story I see of some miraculous whatever, it's like, is that true? So what if you could go to a place where you knew that they vetted it for you? It wasn't AI, it was humans. And that's the whole thing. And humans, humans is with two U's. So we'll have, just so everybody knows, all yeah. of this information is going to be in the show notes. But I just wanted to clarify, if you're just listening to this, that is humans with two, two U's years. when you're looking it up. Yeah, it's a, and it's a funny story around that because... I was, uh, I, and I, before I left um, Halifax to move to Calgary, I was running a company that uh, was a financial services company in the benefits and, and dealt with unions and, and, and uh, pensions and things like that. And, and I had come up with this concept of, a, of I was, it was sort of almost like a charitable concept about humans, about humans, put the you back in humans. So it's like, could we be really real people to help real people? So anyway, I registered the domain that sat there until about, oh, that was 2013 I registered the domain and just sat on my list. And then it happened that we 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 had did the, the you know, the data side, which is now quota, but part of humans. And it's like we should, you know, my partner, Richard Lanz, had had a summa financial and he said you know we should really look at getting back into this bookkeeping counting space and carve that up and i said yeah let's do it differently but let's use a different name and my product uh, partner in gremlin rob boynes he got my list i had all these domains registered that thought someday i might make some money on it i'm use. the same way yeah. i'm the same way and he said what about humans and i thought oh my god humans humans helping humans bridging the gap between technology and, and small business people and whatnot so that's where that all came about and that's it's fundamental to everything that we're doing even the data play and the data side it's like well you can't data is whatever it's like i can produce the data like some of the systems now like quickbooks and that they produce all kinds of great graphs they're incredible. Mm -hmm. What do they mean? Exactly. And how do you use them? But even more so, how do you use them to make the decisions that you need to make on a daily basis, which was the same premise on accounting and bookkeeping, is we reconcile your 
books of account weekly. We're in there every day. We're, we're getting information. We're, we're always there with you. It's not that you're there in the traditional model where it's once a month you bring your sack of papers into the accountant or whatever, It's or at the year end and then you know three months after year end or whether here's your financials and, oh, by the way, you lost money. It's like, well, I want to know that stuff now. You know, it's, it's, it's even, it drives me nuts, even in the benefits space. The benefits is a great example of people that have employee benefits. You don't know what your usage is. You're, you're, cru- you're, you're driving off a cliff because at the end of the year, because benefits is not insurance, it's just you pay now or pay later, but you're going to pay. Yeah. But no one's communicating. No one's talking. No one's saying, hello, you got a major problem here. It's going to be a major expense. And, and really, yeah. that's the whole point is could, can, you be at, can you play an active role with a SMB in their day-to-day lives and matter? And really, that's, that's humans. With so many humans taking an active role within their own financial uh, uh, acquisition, yeah. so they're they're taking active roles in their economy. Um, I interviewed a gal who teaches how, and she actually it's it's she's not coaching. She actually teaches, and you have all your spreadsheets and such, and how to do all this. How that people can start a tote rental company out of their garage. To increase their household revenue anywhere between two and four thousand dollars, and she—that's this is how she helps you set it up yeah. and everything, right? So we have all of these crazy uh, financial um, uh, verticals coming out, and people are doing this. But then you have the flat, the other side, uh, people creating the SaaS products and and looking for global domination, right? Yeah. yeah. So. The question, and this is going to sound really silly, so bear with me because I am not, I turn everything over to an accountant. I Mm -hmm. do not know. But I would love to be in better control. So I have this great program and platform I use, which is Go High Level. And it has this really cool CRM integrated backend. How do I work with the, the bookkeeping side so I can better balance my business so I can do what I'm good at, which is the sales or the, the creation and that. How does that work? How does that bridge through whatever platform? There's so many platforms people yeah. are using. People <clears throat> are using Kajabi and Thinkific and, and High Level and ClickFunnels. And, and, you know, come on, there's like a gazillion different platforms. But yeah. how do we get from promoting our business, doing business, but ensuring we're protecting our business. Right. Yeah, I think, you know, there's a gazillion and, and there's little minds and big minds working on a gazillion more right now. And, I, and that's really the problem. I think, you know, for us, it's like we take care of that part for you. So one of the things about humans is that if if you sign up and we're doing your books, which means we're getting your bank statements, we're coding, we're doing it, you can actually act without being a financial person. And using our, our data, uh, our quota model, you can actually look at your financials. You don't even need to log into the program. You don't need to be an accountant. And then we'll teach you, if you have a question, well, what does that mean? I mean, the ultimate guide, our, our goal for quota is for you to be able to develop your budget within quota without using an Excel spreadsheet or needing to be a CPA or whatever. Because, you know, one of the fundamental issues I see time and time again, there's two things what I, what I see what's with small business people when they, they start it. One is they don't know what they want when they start it. There is no goal. Yep. Um, and then the other is they don't budget. And imagine, I mean, when you don't know what you want, how would you know what to put in place? If, I, if I'm a plumber, I'll just use the plumber. I'm not picking on plumbers because my stepson's a plumber. He's a great guy, and I love plumbers. And they they have great value. Oh yeah, yeah. It, you know what, folks? If you're looking to send your kids to do school, yeah. be a plumber because <laughs> they're going to cost more than your lawyer. But if I, if I <laughs> yeah, if I if I get right size from a plumbing company, I say, well, what do I want to do? Yep. Do I want to be one plumber and work really hard and make a good living? And here's how much I want to make. Or if I say, no, I want to make a million dollars and provide for my family and then exit one day. Well, that's a completely different strategy. So that it's a completely different mindset and build and all the everything else you're going to use. And the other thing, and I've seen this time and time again, I've been the CFO, president, CEO, 
control or uh, every budgets. How do you live without a budget? And it can be rudimentary. The problem is how do you create it? If I tasked you and said, you know, go out, just go out in the lobby there for a little bit and come up with a little budget for your business and bring it back to me, you wouldn't know. Where do you start? What yeah. do you do? Do you use Excel? Is that how you do it? Do you build it yourself? Do you find a, a program, an app that can do it? And and so the ability to take your data, predict on the data, use it, educate you, support you, provide you access. That's what humans is all about. And that's different. And that's innovative, I think, in the marketplace that we're there to help. The ultimate goal is how can we help you make the right decisions? The be- I'm sorry, not the right, because there are no right. The how- best decisions possible to achieve what I said that you need to think about. Yeah, the scalability and the the Not mo- even the just the scale. What the, do you want? What you want. What do you yeah. want? That's, I, you know, I remember talking to this guy who's a counselor or something. It's like, before you talk about anything else, what do you want this to be? Yeah. Like what? And that's so important. It's like if, I have, if I'm an accountant, I'm going to set up my own practice. It's a lot different if I'm going to bill out $150,000 a year and have a little salary and whatnot. Themselves. And, and we're not, we're not, if anybody's out there, we're not saying we're anything against one way or the other. I want people to know that we need people who are happy with that, you 100%. know, 80,000, 70,000, 100,000, yes. 120, because those who are in here, believe it or not, I think people <laughs> who want to build these big scaled companies make less than most of their employees make because we give so much to it. Yeah. But the reality is we can't do it without that that symbiotic, that that ecosystem of I'm happy here, yeah. right? And I'm happy with I want to create a viable, balanced, reliable right. revenue. That's all I want. There's nothing wrong I'm not, with that. There's nothing wrong with that. If it's really what you want, then it's there is absolutely nothing absolutely. wrong with it. No matter what anyone says, because you're not subject to what other people think. Exactly. It's like, yes. Totally agree. Yeah. Totally agree. I have three children. And out of those three kids, I I have one that is a true, when we say a true entrepreneur, like somebody that has the balance of understanding when they need to bring humans in, how they're going to be able to scale, what they're going to be able to use. And actually, I think this one scarily could probably take over the world. I have my creative and I have my my one child that is really comfortable with going, this is how much money I'm, I make. I've already got everything scaled. I'm buying my first property this time. I'm doing this. And they just they just want stability, Mm. right? They're not, they're not looking for that ups and downs. So I I just want to put that out there, no matter what you're building, just as long as you're being real to yourself. Um, I want to talk a little bit around business. So we've talked about, and I'm going to be picking your brain later because uh, like I said, I do have, we are (laughs) (laughs) folks, if you're scaling and you're looking at everything going, okay, now what do I do next? Make sure you get your books in order. I think we've talked about that a few times in different variations on this show. Um, I want to flip this into growth. And one of the things around growth we talk about is your net worth within your network, right? So in your journey of growing these companies and finding the right partnerships to see your vision come Mm -hmm. to fruition, where are you finding those people? How do you create those relationships? How do you, how did you scale your companies to, to the point where it becomes kind of a, a standard practice for people. They know wage point. And mm. I know you weren't specifically the only person involved in that, no. but how do you know when you're on the right path? It's it's really about, it's not, it's one, do you have it? Do you have the network? Are you a, you know, a consummate networker? Is that something that you're really good at? Like I go back to the email. If, is that my skill? Or in in my case, it's not. I'm not. I tend to be. I think when we first sat down, it's like I'm not. I don't like to be out front. I sort of just like to fade into the back, and you know, I, ha- I like to come up with creative ideas and whatnot. But if you're not it, you need to recognize the fact that that's not who you are. Then you need to surround your pe- with yourself with people who are. 
And that's what I did. And if you look at all my businesses, anything I've been involved with, I've brought key people in to fulfill the various needs, my gaps, because I'm filled with them. It's like I can't, you know, it, it, it takes all of us. It's just like when I talk about the body again, every piece is important. It, the whole unit shuts down if one part doesn't work. It's all together. You need to find the right people if you don't have that skill set. Partnerships are critical. Employees are critical. Like WagePoint, you know, it, it, it took off when we, uh, when we do, did a de, uh, partnership with QuickBooks. I mean, it, it was huge. It, it changed the face of the company, and it was very important. My CEO at the time, he was the key contact guy, and he did a great job. And then I had another Silicon Valley guy that was advising us on the contract. So it's like there, you you know, you work with everyone to get it done. It's that's you need to make sure that you surround yourself with great people who get the vision, who can support the vision, and who can network for you if you can't do it yourself. Because we all can't be everything, right? So to me, that 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 that's my success has something to do with me but it has everything to do with the teams that have worked for me and with me stacking your bench it's what they do in basketball you make sure that all yep. of the people on that bench complement each other so they can win the game right. i i 110 percent agree and sometimes you have to invest up front it's not easy because you have to say i can't get paid that's okay but i gotta invest a bit more money in someone because they're going to pay off. This mm -hmm. will pay off. I just have to be patient. That's where the budgeting, of course, comes yeah. in handy, right? So, you know, you have to sometimes take those risks. These you know, I call them infrastructure risks, where you, you're heavy on infrastructure and team. And it's like, but my God, when it when the needle moves, you're there. You know, the team is there, and everyone's ready. The team ready. is there. And you're there yeah. from you're there from very early stages. So there's a story and a legacy Correct. that yeah. that keeps people together. So when you're when you're talking about networking and stuff, so mm -hmm. here at the Cal Peak Club, uh, coming into uh, the club, what does if you're if you're talking to new entrepreneurs or small businesses yeah. that are looking to scale, this type of club, business clubs, what do these offer uh, individuals? When because you mentioned networking mm -hmm. and such, how does somebody help their business and their growth or their scaling? through access to club, clubs like the Cal Peak Club. Yeah, I think, I mean, I think the club can can definitely set the stage for that. I think, you know, it's, you know, whether we had a small business networking event here and not networking, you know, a, a, maybe a lunch. Like, what are the key topics for SMB or startups? Why well, you, you should have a startup event here where you get some startups and they can ask questions, put a panel together or whatever. I think that's the sort of, you know, there's, there's a great number of very successful people that are members at, here at the you know cpc and it's like you know i'm proud to be a member and i look forward to we just recently joined but i mean i'm excited about it i think that you know where you can get to meet people and discuss you know we've all entrepreneurs all you know a lot of us wear the same battle scars right we've been there done that it's not easy if it was everyone would do it it's hard and it's like you know, when you're down, sometimes you got to really pull yourself back up and believe. You know, I always say you got to believe 100 percent in what you do yeah. and the people. But you also have to believe that what you do is helping as important as someone. It's not, it can't be like I find for me anyway, it's not about money. It's not why am I doing this? It's not about money. It's I'm doing it for a broader good and to help someone. And if you really believe that when you get down or you're tired or whatever, you're stressed, it's like I'm there for them. It's not yeah. just me. I got to get this. I got to figure this out. So to me, a place where entrepreneurs can come and especially younger ones. And yeah, you know, our young entrepreneurs, yeah. that's our future. And Calgary's because, exciting. Though, that, oh, Calgary's you know, amazing. I love it. Yeah. So you know what, folks, uh, do check out uh, Gremlin. Do check out, uh, you know, the uh, humans. Get your books in order from the beginning, even if you like just remember, Nike was on the verge of bankruptcy for its first, I think, 24 years of doing business. It's not easy growing a legacy. But if you feel that you have a legacy within you, make sure that you support yourself with all the right companies, with all the right practices and businesses and humans to support you. 
Bill, thank you so much for sharing your oh, time. Oh, hey, thank you so much. It was a blast. It was a great time. Thank you for joining us today on the Back to Business podcast. Be sure to visit calpeteclub.com, C-A-L-P-E-T-E-C-L-U-B.com to find out more about upcoming events, networking opportunities, and membership. If you are not already a valued member at the CPC, where we are proudly connecting and supporting Calgary's business leaders.